This episode was... I don't know. Wonderful? Wonderful is a word I had in mind before I started recording. But as I think about this more and more, I don't know. ReZero is one of those shows that it's hard to put into words how I feel about that, other than to say that it is definitely earning a spot among my favorite anime of all time. And this episode in particular is a brilliant reason of why. There's just so much going on, so many ideas, so many fascinating and interesting characters, and it's like a whirlwind of emotions and desires and like trying to figure out where this could possibly go. So let's get through this episode. I'm going to talk more about the season as a whole and some other interesting things later and where I think I'll go in the second core, but for now let's just focus on this episode. So we had Satella show up in the Castle of Dreams, which is apparently Echidona's place and along with all the witches, and Satalia shows up declaring her love for Subaru once again, which I mean, it kind of makes sense. That's whole Satalia's thing is like she loves him, but it's really creepy and destructive and not a good love. Except, oh yeah, except in many ways, Akidona represents what it truly means to love someone. And there is some jealousy. She is the witch of envy after all, but there's also a purity to it. And... What I like about what she says, let me, I have all the screenshots I took coming up, is that she says to love himself more, to treasure himself more. And it's so unexpected because I thought it'd be like the whole controlling type of love. But no, she truly wants what is best for Subaru. And that she wants him to love himself and protect himself. And it feels like she's pained by all the suffering that he's gone through through this. And it's like, it's so weird. She even makes a comment too, saying it's because he gave her everything. And so what does that mean? That he ended up saving her. But when? I had a theory back when I was rewatching uh, season one that maybe the Amelia that he first encountered was in fact Satalia. Which, I don't know. I This is a crazy theory and probably not right. But it makes me wonder if that is the moment. That when he was pulled into this world, he somehow saves Natalia. And that is why she gave him the power to turn by death. And so that would mean that in fact, he was not brought to this world with that power. But he got it later. They're two different events. I feel like I'm definitely like reaching here. But maybe, maybe. And it's, like, I don't know. This is really a bizarre scene. And Satala's love for Subaru reminds me of Subaru's love for Amelia. Like, the reason that Subaru is so dedicated to Amelia is because she saved him that one time in a moment that he doesn't remember. Which also makes me wonder. Satalia is the Witch of Envy. We know that. And she has given Subaru the power to return by death. Again, that's the whole premise of the show. And when he goes back, no one remembers it, which would imply that if he did not have the power of return by death and someone else did and they went back, then he would also not remember it. Actually, even if he did have the power, then, well, the same thing would might occur. We don't know. Of course, this is assuming there could be multiple people with return by death. So what I am wondering is, is if Satalia brought Subaru to this world. Okay, I'm not wondering that. Thoughts are forming inside my head right now, and they could be <laughs> completely off, but this is fun. This is fun. So Satalia brought Subaru to this world. What if he lived a full life in this world, years maybe, ended up meeting Satalia, maybe falling in love with her? That would be weird, but not impossible. And what if during that time Subaru saved her? And because Subaru saved her... Oh, okay. I have too many ideas right now. And during that time Subaru saved her, but later on she ended up dying anyway. And because she had the power to return by death, it reset the timeline back to when Subaru was summoned into the world. 
And because she was so grateful for Subaru, she ended up giving that power, the return by death, to him. We also found something else very interesting when Subaru was leaving the wherever he was. I know I said it earlier, but I forgot the name. Satya said that she wanted Subaru to come kill her, which would imply that she can no longer return by death, so she can be killed. And so now that she has given that power up to Subaru, assuming she has, now she wants Subaru to use that power to come kill her. She basically wants to die. Which is truly fascinating. And there again, there are so many other things here. What I one of the most interesting things that I found that I saw here was how Subaru basically saw no way out of this area, so he tried killing himself by biting his tongue so he basically bleed out. And then Minerva jumped in. Basically saying that she wasn't going to allow anyone to die like that from suicide because she's Minerva. She heals people. But then Pride stepped in, blocking her attack. And like yet a sort of fight among the witches that eventually those who wanted to save Subaru ended up uh, coming to his side and saving him. And it's also very interesting to see in Subaru's mindset on anything how he feels his life is so worthless that the only thing he can do is die and try again and the suffering for him doesn't matter until he finally is able to win and save everyone and he vows like he doesn't want to lose anyone he's super greedy that's why he has this connection with Ekidona one of the other witches and yeah this is crazy but I forget exactly how it was, but I think it was one of the witches used the power to show Subaru all the people who do care about him, especially Ram. The line from Ram saying, show me how awesome you can be, Subaru. And I think that really shows Subaru the value that he has. Beyond someone who can die repeatedly and all that, but like he has value as a sort of hero. And I also like the part where they were, where it felt like Subaru was accused of being like super selfish or self-centered and just like his whole mindset of his worthlessness yeah there's a ton here there is and even Minerva makes a comment saying the twisted thinking makes you more vile than any witch and it's just like saying that decide that he's the only needs to suffer is cowardly it's like he cares about everyone but he doesn't value them. It's like he sees them as people who only need to be protected. And the time that he can actually win is when he sees them as people who can help him achieve the goal and their mutual goal, not just a single goal on their own. Yeah, so these characters are insane. <laughs> ah, yes, this is, this is really special. All right, skipping forward again. I took way too many screenshots here. And it's interesting, too, how Satalia made the comment saying, like, I will allow you to be saved, too. And just, like, how all the witches came together for him. And we even have Ekidona reaching out to Subaru again, but Subaru rejecting, not wanting to be hurt or suffering or being sad or lose anything, which, I don't know. It feels like Ekidona's uh, offer makes a lot of sense. Like, he will be able to save himself along with all those around him, so why not take it? Granted, Ekidona is a witch, and we can't fully trust them, but I also don't feel we can fully doubt them either. They're interesting. But then Ekidona ends up revealing that Garfield needs to learn the good about the outside world, and that might be the key. Maybe. But yeah, I love the part where Subaru went around thanking all the witches, thanking them for being willing to let him die, and also for not letting him die. And for letting him hear those voices he needed to hear. That was cool. That was a cool part. And he also, in a way, thanks Italia. Which is kind of crazy because Italia was built up to be like this big main villain. And maybe she kind of is. But there's so much more to her than that. And like, it's also interesting to see that there are all the people who care about him. Even the, the witches. So, yes. Then Subaru went out of Ekidona's place, and it turns out he was dragged out of the cemetery by Patrish, the ground dragon, 
who is amazing. And I love how Otto and Patrish are there for Subaru. It's kind of a meme, like, among my friends to say, like, Patrish is best girl. But I kind of think she is, or at least best ground dragon. There's not much competition that's not saying much. And there are a lot of other great girls, too, like Akidona and Rem and Amelia and all the others. But yeah, Patrice is also best girl. And Otto is best boy, seriously. I, we'll talk more about him later. But yeah, Subaru went back to Roswell, and they had a, another conversation. Subaru basically catching Roswell up on everything that he knew. It's very interesting here how Roswell undoes the like paint around his eyes and face, and I feel like that means something. I also want to kind of like read their light novel or web novel and see like what all dialogue do they cut because this is like super compressed. Or it feels that way, like how every line means something, and like I want more to get more of the characters' thoughts and understandings and all that. And it's also interesting how much Roswell messes with Subaru. And we learned last time they had the conversation how Roswell's goal is to form Subaru like himself, to basically make him only care about one thing and be willing to throw everything else away for that one thing. In Subaru's case, of course, Amelia. And we get more of that here, with Roswell saying that Subaru must undergo the trial in Amelia's place, even if Amelia doesn't want it, because out of his love, he will do anything for Amelia here. And even if that means going against Amelia's wishes. And then you could get some of Roswell's twisted hope, saying like, as long as there is life, there is future. And as long as there is future, there is hope. And as long as there is hope, there is possibility. And that would mean people can be saved. But yeah, that's, again, so twisted. And of course, we also learned that the order to attack the mansion came from none other than Roswell himself. Which, you know, makes a lot of sense. So is this like Roswell is the main villain planning everything? Kind of. But there are like so many other characters too. What I love about Ray Zero is that there's not like a set villain. I mean, you have like the Apostles. Wait, no. The Apostles. The Thin Arpich, Archbishops. That's the word. You have them and then you have Roswell and then you have the witches himself, especially Satalia. And Yeah. And we learned that Roswell is basically doing this so that Subaru cannot save both the sanctuary and the mansion and has to decide. And we, and yeah, that just shows how twisted Roswell is. And it's interesting too, in anime a lot of times you'll, the main character will be faced with a choice. Save one or the other, and they'll somehow try to find a way to save both. And Roswell is basically doing that to Subaru, but making it impossible, even with his reset powers, to save both. And we also learn that Roswell has been alive for 400 years, and has been insane all that time. Well, not 400, well, not all the time he's been alive, but since the event 400 years ago, which I'm assuming is when he first met Ekidona, and is basically doing all this out of love for her, and is willing to discard anything and everything else. And then he asks Subaru why he is not insane yet. If this is interesting, it shows a common theme of insanity, like we saw that with the Pedal Geese last season, and how they are going willing to do anything possible. Which also makes me wonder, could Roswell be a sin archbishop? He's certainly insane enough. He has a singular purpose, which seems to be tied into insanity. You could say he's lost his humanity, which again, that sounds like Pedal Geese. I wonder. Maybe he... No, we already had greed and gluttony. I was about to say he was greed. So what else could Roswell be? Unless the encounter 400 years ago was in fact not just with Echidona, but with another one, the witches. So like, I don't think it can be Envy because that would be Satalia who is like still alive and still has her witches factor. It's obviously not gluttony because gluttony has been defeated and Subaru has that factor. It's not greed or gluttony because we met the two of them, which leaves pride. It leaves wrath. And it leaves lust. Right? That's one, two, four. Yeah. So we have lust, pride, and what, what did I? Wrath? Would any of this fit Roswell? Maybe lust if he is lusting after Echidona. Could be. I don't feel like that's right, though. Thinking Wrath and Pride don't fit either, and they seem to be saying that Subaru could be Pride. 
At least that's what they thought, like, he has potential to be or something. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah. Then Super basically apologizes, saying that he lost his uh, qualification to do the test. And, basically, Roswell says Ekidona can fix that. He can get it back. And that Subaru is Roswell's hope. Which, actually, no. Not just him, but him and Ram. And yeah, so this basically breaks Subaru. He goes around uh, trying to figure out like what she should do. He keeps like mumbling that. And then Otto finds him. Otto is amazing here. Like, I love how like Otto is the one who keeps being there for Subaru. And how Otto is probably the most normal character we've encountered so far, or at least of the semi-major characters. Maybe Petra? But yeah, Otto is great. And... <laughs> Okay, crap, I, I went through the end of my screenshots. And basically, Otto smacks him in the face and says that you don't need to just put on tough front around your friends. And this ties back to the theme of the episode, that Subaru should not do this alone. He cannot do this alone. He needs his friends. And even though he feels alone, he's not anymore. He has the support of Ekidona and the witches, to a degree at least. He has Ram and Beatrice and, well, Amelia, of course, and Otto, and Patrish, and maybe Garfield. Yeah, it might be kind of hard, but Subaru's not alone here. And I love how that is the theme that ties all of this together. This has been a crazy core season, whatever. <laughs> I mean, even crazy by ReZero standards in season one was plenty crazy. I'm not quite sure where season two is going to go. I think I'm going to do a video with that speculation once I have some more time to put into it. Because, like, I am lost. But yes, thank you for watching. Thank you if you've been joining me for these past uh, few months. It's been a ton of fun to watch ReZero talk about it. Stick into what it is offering. And it really is an amazing show. One of my favorites of all time, in fact. And definitely one of my top ones of the year, to say the least. So yes, thank you for watching, and don't worry, I will have plenty of more thoughts about ReZero, though, as overall, and I'll be back next quarter to talk about more, because this is ReZero. It's so much fun to talk about. And I will see you all next time.